This is Emily from Sex with Emily, and you are watching the Sexy Mr. Media. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to documentary filmmaker Morgan Spurlock, whose best known work is Super Size Me, in which he ate nothing but McDonald's for a month and gave the fast food giant infinite heartburn in return. Stick around. In Comic-Con, Episode 4, A Fan's Hope, he's once again surrounded by overweight burgers, fries, and a Coke fans living in their parents' basements. But this time, they're wearing colorful, skin-tight costumes. The special effects are amazing! Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of comic book fans who, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, they already know how this and every other story ends in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. I don't know if Morgan Spurlock is getting rich as a documentary filmmaker, but he sure looks like a guy who's having a good time going to work each day. Spurlock first came to international attention with his face-first slide into bad cholesterol hell with Super Size Me, his month-long ode to McDonald's. It was a great gimmick that had legs, much the same way that Roger and me earlier launched the career of Michael Moore. Both men bring a modern, populist point of view to their non-fiction storytelling. Spurlock, however, is the one who seems more interested in entertaining and less about directly beating viewers over the head to make a sociological point. This week, Spurlock has two new products for the world to see. In a moment, we're going to talk about Comic-Con, Episode 4, A Fan's Hope, in which he follows five attendees through the annual San Diego, California convention of comic book and genre movie super geeks. Along the way, he captures his own conversations with Stan Lee, Joss Whedon, Frank Miller, Kevin Smith, Matt Groening, Seth Rogen, and Eli Roth. But Spurlock is also the man behind a new TV series that debuted on Hulu this week, A Day in the Life of. It's Hulu's first original programming, and the first episode features one of my own podcast heroes, comedian Mark Marin. Thanks for uh, coming to Mr. Media. Appreciate it. My pleasure. So, um, not many stories of a person's first trip to uh, Comic-Con uh, wind up with Stan Lee saying, Hey, Morgan, let's make a movie. I'm, really? Is that the, really the way it happened? That's really the way it happened. But, it, but uh, here's the thing that I tell people, too. is like I'm sure Stan Lee probably says that to everybody. I'm sure he probably said, hey, Edgar Wright, we should make a movie together. Hey, Guillermo del Toro, we should make a movie together. I'm just the only one who actually believed it and, uh, and said, yes, we should do it. Let's make a movie. Now, which would have made you happier, if he asked you to make a movie together or if he said, hey, let's create a superhero together? Um, I don't know. The movie was pretty awesome. The, this, is, this is actually real. The superhero is still kind of uh, you know, out, in the, uh, out in the ether. So how do you get the emperor of Marvel Comics involved on an ongoing basis, and what was it like to work with him? I mean, Stan is just, Stan's a force of nature. I mean, Stan is one of these people who, to this day, still has more passion and more drive, more excitement about, you know, this industry and the people in it than anyone I've ever met. So, you know, for me, it was just a thrill to get to meet with him, to get to work with him, to get, you know, to gain insight from him into the, the people and the stories. So, I mean, it was, I, I was just, I was really, really lucky. And then comic book fans were a notoriously close-knit bunch of uh, know-it-alls who were very of outsiders. Uh, how did you break through that? Well, I think that uh, this, is, this is a perfect example of how we also got the movie made. I mean, had I tried to make this movie by myself, I don't think it ever would have happened. But we were able to put together this geek dream team of people who really believed in the movie. Stan Lee, Joss Whedon, Thomas Tull, the CEO of Legendary Pictures, Harry Knowles from Ain't It Cool News... You know, once you kind of have those people saying, no, no, we believe in this and we're a part of this, you know, then people kind of start to put down their, you know, lay, lay down their sabers and actually want to have a conversation. Now, Harry Knowles was an interesting guy to have involved. Did you do that just to be sure you'd get a good review? <laughs> yeah, finally. Maybe finally we'll get a good one. No, Harry, uh, Harry was great. You know, but Harry, Harry's one of those people, like his father was a, was a comic book vendor, you know, was a comic book dealer. He's the one who took Harry to his very first comic book convention, and his father was the one who was instrumental in bringing cons to Texas. So, you know, for me, Harry had a very interesting perspective, and Harry was the one that suggested we get Chuck Rosansky in the film. You know, Chuck Rosansky, who is the owner and operator of Mile High Comics in Denver, uh, a fantastic, you know, just personality in the comic book world, and just a great guy to have in the film. Now, would you say this is kind of the, uh, the comic book geek version of uh, Roger Nygaard's Trekkies? 
in, in, in the way it kind of I'd say I think it's even more of a celebration. I found Trekkies not to be nearly a celebration of the culture and of the people in it. You know, I think that part of Trekkies was I, I feel like part of Trekkies was let's laugh at these people more than let's celebrate these people. I, I mean, there was a lot of that film that I felt was much more, uh, it didn't feel as, as much as we were kind of going through the experience with these people. Like, you're, you're rooting for the people in this movie. Like, you're rooting for Holly Conrad and for Skip Harvey and Eric Hansen and James Darling is say, and Say Young as he's about to propose to his girlfriend. You know, you feel, I feel much more invested in these people because I finally see them as people. And I think that's what the film does really well. Bob, you've got about one minute left. Hey, talk a little bit about the root of your own comic book. You're saying, did you read that as a kid? Yeah, when I was a kid, you know, I would I was reading, uh, you know, and that's what that was the conversation I had with Stan Lee. Is it was you know it was Spider Man, it was uh, uh, it was X Men, it was um, I, I loved Plastic Man. Oddly enough, like Plastic Man was one of my favorite comics as a kid. I, I started reading uh, the G.I. Joe comics. I still have my G.I. Joe number one that I got back in, like, whatever it was, 1980 or 81 um, at my mom's house. Um, but for me, it, it, kind of started, uh, it kind of started with Spider-Man. I think it was after I saw Spider-Man on the Electric Company was when I started reading Spider-Man comic books. I figured that the Super Size Me guy would have said Giant Man. <laughs> Maybe that's for next, one, for next time. Okay. Hey, Morgan, uh, thanks so much for joining us, Mr. Media, and good luck with the new film. Thank you very much. Take care. Right. Bye-bye. For more original interviews, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, or iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Another good idea? Download our new free Mr. Media mobile app in the Android market. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many parts of the Internet. Show your support of Mr. Media by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. We're also supported by the thepartyauthority.us. Call DJ Ira for all your party entertainment needs nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs or visit their website, thepartyauthority.us. If you've got an idea for a guest, a comment on today's show, or would like to advertise on Mr. Media Radio, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. You can also call our 24-hour listener line at 1-727-498-4711. Some messages may be used in an upcoming show. And unless you live next door to Mr. Media, there may be a toll charge. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube and Vimeo video channels. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, this is Bob Andelman from Mr. Media. First of all, I want to thank you for years of support uh, listening to the show. We're starting our sixth year, it's hard to believe, our sixth year uh, as 2012 starts and heading towards our 1,000th online podcast, uh, audio and video. It's uh, pretty amazing, <laughs> frankly. Uh, I remember starting it several years ago thinking, this will never last. And podcasts, that's as stupid a word as blogging. But here we are, <laughs> starting our sixth year and heading up to a thousand interviews. And I want to thank everybody for uh, listening and supporting the show. I also want to tell you that, uh, you know, one of the things that's been very helpful for this show is Stitcher Radio. Yes, this is sort of a commercial. Now, there are millions of smartphone apps in the world, but I only use one several times a day, Stitcher Radio. I build my own radio station to listen to broadcast and online shows when I want and in the order I want. CNN News Update, Onion Radio News, WTF with Mark Marin, MSNBC's Morning Joe, Studio 60, the TechCrunch headlines, and, of course, Mr. Media. It's free. It works on iPhone, Android, BlackBerry, Palm Pre, and much more. And you can get it for free for yourself. Try it out. I guarantee you're going to love it. 
stitcher.com slash mrmedia. That's stitcher.com slash mrmedia. You're going to love it. And thanks again for supporting the show.